are basically the stuff that, you know, dreams are made of. Anything like this in the U.S.? Nothing that I've drove. The world of automotive engineering is filled with mind-blowing ideas and concepts that, for one reason or another, never saw the light of day. But what if I told you that some of these inventions could have completely transformed the way we drive today? What were the groundbreaking features that could have made your daily commute safer, more efficient, or even more fun? And more importantly, why did these innovations never make it to your driveway? So let's not waste your time and start. Rocket Brakes The idea of integrating retro rocket braking systems into land vehicles sounds like something engineers dreamt up for the next blockbuster, designed to completely reshape how we think about stopping a car. It's a concept that, although wild and full of potential, never quite made it off the drawing board into our garages. Now, what exactly is a retro rocket braking system? Picture a setup that doesn't just rely on the trusty friction between your car's brake pads and wheels. Instead, it uses rocket motors to pump out reverse thrust, slashing stopping time and distance like a magic trick. Designed to be a backup to normal brakes, these rockets were set to redefine how fast you could bring a runaway vehicle to a halt. This innovative system wasn't meant to kick traditional brakes to the curb either. Instead, it aimed to work in harmony with mechanical brakes, layering an extra blanket of safety without tearing out the current systems. But before we dive into the next one, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Automatic Seat Belts Automatic seat belts were introduced in the late 1980s to improve car safety by automatically moving into place. Back in the day, automatic seat belts were touted as the next big thing in car safety, designed to automatically secure passengers for maximum protection. But despite the promising concept, many of these innovative designs never even made it to mass production, and the ones that did quickly fell out of favor. One of the key factors that derailed the automatic seat belt revolution, advancements in airbag technology. As airbags became more advanced and affordable, regulations started shifting away from passive restraint systems like automatic belts and focused on mandating airbags instead. But it wasn't just the regulatory changes that did automatic seat belts in. It turns out a lot of drivers and passengers found these high-tech belts to be more hassle than help. The mechanisms could be tricky to operate and many folks felt insecure with just the shoulder strap and no lap belt. Many users skipped this step, leading to serious injuries and accidents. For instance, the cross chest belt could cause severe neck injuries if the lap belt wasn't used. Compared to the simplicity of good old manual seat belts, automatic versions just didn't seem worth the effort. So while the automatic seat belt had so much potential to revolutionize in-car safety, a perfect storm of regulatory changes, consumer resistance, and technological advancements ultimately doomed these innovative designs to the automotive scrap heap. The Tucker's Safety Windshield. Let's talk about the tale of the Tucker 48, crafted by the visionary Preston Tucker in the late 1940s. This car was a marvel, and if talks about game-changing vehicles arise, the Tucker 48 surely deserves a top spot. One of its standout features was its innovative safety windshield. Concerned that when car passengers were launched through the windscreen in a crash, the Tucker 48 had a rather unique safety feature, a detachable windscreen that was shatterproof and would pop out when hit. Now, this wasn't just some eye-catching design to turn heads on the street. No, it was a monumental leap forward in the realm of automotive safety technology, paving a new road for future designs to follow. Yet, despite the immense potential of this advanced windshield, it never saw mass production. Instead, it lingered in history as a bittersweet reminder of innovation that almost was a sobering tale of what could have transformed vehicle safety forever. The journey of the Tucker 48, however, was far from smooth sailing. The Tucker Corporation faced a torrent of financial storms, largely brewed by fierce legal battles. Larger, more established auto giants like Ford and General Motors circled like sharks, launching accusations of fraud. These titans of industry unleashed a wave of challenges so fierce that they drained Tucker's resources dry. The chaos did more than empty coffers. It diverted precious time and attention away from the all-important mission of bringing the Tucker 48 into production. Push button transmission. Push button transmissions have a fascinating and somewhat mysterious past that stretches back to the 1950s and 1960s. This system used buttons on the dashboard to choose gears, which was seen as a cutting edge and convenient feature at the time. 
a time when automotive giants like Chrysler and Ford dared to break the mold with this novel approach to shifting gears. Imagine this, a car without the traditional gear stick, offering a futuristic feel with just the press of a button. How cool is that? But the tale of push-button transmissions isn't just about innovation, it's also about the intriguing concepts that never quite hit the road. One of the most mind-blowing concepts that never fully revved up involved integrating push-button transmissions with infotainment systems. Picture this, a single interface where you could seamlessly manage your car's functions while grooving to your favorite tunes or navigating through the latest podcasts. It was a brilliant twist aimed at enhancing the driver's experience, combining functionality with entertainment. However, like any good story, this one had its own set of challenges. The big hurdle here was making sure it was user-friendly without causing drivers to lose focus on the road. Concerns about usability and potential distractions derailed this daring concept before it could gain traction. Bose system suspension. Bose, yeah, the speaker guys had an idea, which in my opinion was totally awesome. Now the idea was to use magnets to adjust the car suspension in only a few thousandths of a second after it sensed a bump in the road. And in doing so, kept the car completely flat no matter what terrain you were driving on. The Bose Active Suspension System remains one of the most daring and ambitious innovations ever attempted in the realm of automotive suspension technology. Imagine, almost three decades in the making, how it promised to completely transform the way vehicles handled roads, offering a ride so smooth and controlled that potholes and bumps seemed almost non-existent. But here's the kicker. Despite all its groundbreaking potential and buzzworthy appeal, Bose's avant-garde brainchild never got the green light for mass production. But why? Let's talk about the weight concerns. The system's genius relied heavily on complex linear actuators and a slew of other components. This gear ended up adding nearly 200 pounds to each vehicle. Picture that extra heft dragging down fuel economy and performance. Two metrics consumers keep a hawk eye on when buying cars these days. Those pounds didn't just weigh down the cars, they weighed down the system's future, planting doubts about its viability in a market increasingly obsessed with efficiency. Then there's the matter of high costs, which acted like a steep hill the system couldn't quite climb. The intricate design and advanced materials that made the system so innovative also made it a wallet buster to produce. Car manufacturers are naturally hesitant to embrace technology destined to inflate prices without consumers demanding it in mass. White Wall Tires White wall tires, which have a white stripe or sidewall, became popular in the early 1900s. They were initially made by adding zinc oxide to the rubber, which also made them more durable. White wall tires have always been the epitome of automotive style, capturing the essence of class and sophistication since their inception. But did you know that several groundbreaking ideas surrounding these tires never saw the light of day? Among the intriguing ideas that never reached our driveways was the development of self-cleaning coatings for white walls. Just imagine advanced materials designed to repel dirt and grime, creating a surface where contaminants slid off with ease, like skaters gliding across ice. In theory, this would have significantly reduced the need for constant scrubbing, but reality didn't match theory. The technology just wasn't ready to face the real-world challenges that awaited. Furthermore, there were aspirations to create white walls crafted from durable materials that could resist the everyday wear and tear. The goal? To solve the headache of maintenance that plagued white wall enthusiasts. However, balancing durability with the classic aesthetic turned out to be a monumental task that engineers couldn't quite conquer. Cadillac and car toilet. This one's awesome. This is not a joke at all. Cadillac actually invented a car with a built-in toilet. It was designed to help them complete a 10,000 mile continuous drive as part of a publicity stunt that they were planning. But after that success, Cadillac actually considered fitting it to production cars. Cadillac once flirted with an idea that borders on genius and madness, an in-car toilet. Yes, you heard that right. Picture an intersection where luxury, convenience, and sheer innovation collide to create an automobile experience no one could have imagined. At first glance, it might sound like a bizarre novelty, but dig a little deeper and you realize it addressed a genuine need. Think of long distance travelers gliding over miles of asphalt with a pit stop always within reach. Despite the tantrum 
tantalizing promise of such a feature, this revolutionary idea never found its way onto the production line. One of the most pressing issues was the tricky puzzle of space limitations. How could engineers fit a functional toilet without cramping the luxury and comfort one expects from a Cadillac? Passenger space remains a premium in vehicles, and squeezing in plumbing without compromising the plush experience proved to be quite the engineering conundrum. Equally daunting were the cost concerns that loomed over this project like a cloud of doubt. The cutting edge sanitation and odor control technologies required to make such an amenity possible would have significantly driven up production costs. For cars already wearing hefty price tags, manufacturers might have concluded that the additional financial burden on consumers was impractical for a feature not destined for mass market sensation. Disappearing doors. Now, this is another one that I wish would have been more successful. The incredible disappearing doors as seen on the BMW Z1. In a world where Gullwing, Scissor, Lambo, even suicide doors are a feature on several different models. The fact that disappearing doors aren't, that's a crying shame. Imagine a car that looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. A sleek, futuristic ride where the doors don't just swing open, but vanish entirely into the vehicle's body. This isn't just a fantasy cooked up by Hollywood screenwriters. The concept of disappearing doors, those magical portals that slide or retract into the car's frame, has fascinated car enthusiasts and designers for decades. It's a tantalizing idea, one that's inspired countless sketches and jaw-dropping prototypes. Yet, as Thrilling as it sounds, these visionary designs have rarely made the leap from the drawing board to the roads we drive on every day. One of the primary roadblocks of this innovation is safety. When it comes to a car crash, traditional doors aren't just entryways, they're crucial defenders, providing vital structural support to safeguard passengers. Critics raise a red flag, pointing out that if a car with disappearing doors gets banged up in an accident, the whole idea might fall apart, literally. The very mechanism that makes these doors retract could also render them useless if the vehicle's structure takes a hit, potentially trapping occupants inside. That's a pretty big deal in scenarios where every second counts, like side impacts or critical rescue operations, where getting out fast is the name of the game. Landau Bars Landau bars were decorative features added to cars to mimic the look of convertible carriages from the 18th century. These bars originated in Landau, Germany, where they were initially functional, supporting the folding roofs of horse-drawn carriages. You know those sleek Landau bars on fancy cars? They're those cool decorative touches that make fixed roof models look like they've got a convertible vibe. Perched on the C-pillars, they create the illusion of a two-piece roof. While Landau bars have graced all sorts of production vehicles, some truly innovative concepts for these design elements never made it past the drawing board. The problem, many of the proposed Landau bar designs required super complex manufacturing processes that would have hiked up production costs significantly. And let's be real, automakers focused on profits weren't exactly thrilled about that. So a lot of those innovative concepts never made it past the prototype stage. Age. These days, the luxury car market is more cutthroat than ever. Brands aren't just competing on style anymore. Customers now prioritize practical features that offer real benefits. So manufacturers have had to shift their focus, putting a bigger emphasis on tangible perks over purely aesthetic enhancements modular body work. By using interchangeable components that can be switched out or reconfigured with ease, modular body work holds the potential to dramatically change the landscape of vehicle manufacturing, maintenance, and personalization. Yet despite the groundbreaking promise this concept holds, many modular bodywork designs have stalled on the brink of production, never quite reaching the assembly lines. Let's talk about some of these forward-thinking designs that regrettably never made it beyond the drawing board. The idea was that one chassis could serve a wide variety of body styles, from vans to low-slung sports cars that could be swapped out easily providing flexibility for the owner. Around the early 2000s, GM unveiled an ambitious project known as the Autonomy Concept. This was more than just a car. It represented an entirely new way of thinking about vehicles, powered by clean hydrogen fuel cells. The heart of the Autonomy was its modular chassis, ingeniously crafted to support various body styles, whether that be a sedan, an SUV, or a truck, all on the same platform. The adaptability was astonishing, promising not only a high degree of personalization, but also a giant leap 
leap toward a sustainable automotive future. The production costs of such modular systems, combined with the engineering complexities linked to utilizing hydrogen technology, proved formidable barriers. Even for a giant like GM, the investment required was too daunting to justify in a marketplace not quite ready for or receptive to such change. Woody Wagons Woody's, or Woody Wagons, were cars with wooden body panels popular in the 1930s and 40s. These cars used wood for their panels because it was cheaper and more accessible than metal during the Great Depression. The legendary Woodies carved out their own special chapter in automotive history, oozing with nostalgic charm and unique appeal. Once the go-to choice for families and outdoor adventurers alike, their allure faded over time, leading to their ultimate disappearance from car production lines. Let's roll back to the early 20th century. Woody's first appeared as station wagons, standing out with their wood-clad designs and merging utility with style effortlessly. They were built with steel frames adorned with wooden panels, striking a charming balance that resonated perfectly with the adventurous souls of the post-war suburban age. Yet, as time marched on, automotive taste shifted gears. The world fell in love with modern aesthetics, favoring sleek lines and minimalistic flair over the wood-paneled charm that had once captivated the masses. Cars boasting all steel bodies and futuristic styling took center stage, leaving the Woodies to lag in the past. Relics of an era swept away by the winds of change, so they didn't make it for too long. Record Players In the 1950s, car manufacturers introduced record players as an exciting new feature for in-car entertainment. These players allowed drivers and passengers to enjoy their favorite vinyl records while traveling. The story of record players finding a home in automobiles is one of the most intriguing tales in the world of cars. Can you imagine cruising down the highway while spinning your favorite vinyl record? It sounds incredible, doesn't it? Yet, as enticing as the concept was, mixing the golden sound of vinyl with the freedom of the open road, this blend of technology encountered hurdles that were almost impossible to clear. Think about it. Vinyl records are fragile, easily affected by the tiniest of tremors. The stylus, that little needle tracing the grooves, had to be just right, otherwise it skipped or scratched. This delicate dance was tough enough while stationary, let alone bouncing around in a car. Practicality soon became the elephant in the room. Visualize trying to change records while keeping your eyes on the road. It screams danger, doesn't it? Unlike our sleek modern systems that respond to voice commands or a quick touch, swapping out records demands focus in both hands. This not only pulled attention away from driving, but also significantly raised the risk of accidents. The charm of vinyl, with its old school authenticity, had to contend with real world safety complications, turning what began as an appealing experiment into a safety concern for the ages. Child partition. Being stuck driving a car for hours and hours with kids or people you don't like can be a total drag. I mean, we've all been there. So, would it shock you if I told you that the answer was actually invented in 1940, many auto manufacturers experimented with sliding partition tech at that time. Imagine a world where the chaos of children squabbling or reaching for the front seat during a car ride is kept at bay by an unassuming but game-changing innovation. The child partition. This new concept was designed as an ambitious safety feature aimed to enhance the safety and comfort of young passengers in vehicles. Picture a sturdy yet flexible barrier that creates a distinct divide between the back seat where children sit and the front seats. You'd think something so promising would be a no-brainer for car manufacturers. But unfortunately, a confluence of challenges ensured it remained an unrealized dream. Consumer preferences are like the ever-changing tide, as they shifted towards more integrated safety solutions, such as built-in child safety seats and the magic of advanced infotainment systems. The appetite for a standalone partition system diminished. It seems the market was inching away from physical barriers and leaning toward tech-centered innovations. Horsey Horseless Amid the vast array of oddball inventions that pepper the annals of automotive history, one vehicle stands out for its peculiar charm and audacious design, the Horsey Horseless. Picture this, April 11th, 1899 is a date marked not just by patents, but by the birth of one of the most whimsical concepts that would never hit the assembly line. This vehicle was adorned with a faux horse head mounted right at the front, the grand idea. Okay, now when cars first started, you might not know this if you were born less than 100 years ago. It was a really scary thing for people. 
I mean, cars don't have souls. They don't have eyes. That's a thing that people used to say. I mean, my car doesn't have eyes, man. Like your horse theoretically would keep you from driving it off of a cliff. And it wasn't just the people who had a problem with cars. It was horses too. Horses had a rough time sharing the roads with these new gas machines. To help society make the leap from horse-drawn carriages to these newfangled motorized contraptions, inventors were akin to restless alchemists, concocting myriad machines with designs and technologies that tease the boundaries of imagination. The horsey horseless pranced onto the scene amid this whirlwind of innovation. It was part of a larger phenomenon known as skeuomorphism, a term for when inventors borrowed familiar features from existing forms, blending them with the unfamiliar to create something that was both new and comfortingly recognizable. Though it never trotted its way into mainstream success, it beautifully encapsulates a quirky chapter of automotive ambition that still piques curiosity today. Fifth Wheel Parallel parking has always been one of the hardest skills for average drivers to master. I mean, I'm really, 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 really good at it, but not everybody is, and that's okay. You gotta reverse, you gotta steer, you gotta try not to scratch your car, you gotta try not to curb your wheels, you gotta try not to hit two other cars. That's hard. And parallel parking has led to a ton of different innovations the fifth wheel in car design is one of those brilliant yet obscure innovations nestled in the annals of history, like a whispered secret among car enthusiasts. Originally crafted to make the dreaded parallel parking maneuver as easy as pie, this clever tech could have transformed the way we slide our cars into those oh-so-tight city spots. Yet, despite the tantalizing glimmer of potential, the system faced a fleet of obstacles, keeping it in the realm of what could have been. Let me tell you a tale, a tale that begins in the sunny expanses of California, sometime in the early 1930s. Enter Brooks Walker, an inventor with a mind humming like an engine at full throttle. His vision, a spare tire that didn't just hang out in the trunk, but with a touch of genius, extended as a perpendicular helper wheel from the back of the car. But despite Walker's zeal, his presentations at auto shows, and his relentless hustle to publicize this futuristic feat from the 50s well into the 70s, his fifth wheel invention failed to find a home in the garages of major automakers. They remained unmoved, uninterested in embedding this potential game changer into their production lines. Floor Dimmer Switch Floor Dimmer Switch, introduced in the 1920s, was a car innovation that allowed drivers to change between high and low beam headlights by pressing a button on the car floor with their foot. Let's talk about the Floor Dimmer Switch, a nifty invention that aims to control the headlights and high beams with nothing but a tap of your foot. Sounds kinda genius, right? Despite finding a cozy place in the hearts of classic car enthusiasts and having its charms aptly recognized in vintage models, this little marvel didn't quite soar to modern day stardom. These floor dimmers were a stalwart in many mid 20th century automobiles. They lent drivers the ability to make quick lighting changes while maintaining a steady watch on the road's horizon. This trait made them a beloved feature in numerous classic cars, keeping the streets illuminated just right without the fuss. But as car manufacturers doubled down on reducing distractions for drivers, floor dimmer switches lost some of their sheen. Though convenient, the risk was there. Drivers could potentially become a hazard if they took their eyes off the road to search for this switch at their feet. The industry slowly opted for steering wheel mounted controls, allowing drivers to adjust lights without a split second glance away from the road. Luggage racks. Luggage racks used to be a common feature on cars, especially during the mid 20th century, typically mounted on the roof or trunk to carry extra luggage. Enter the luggage rack, a game-changing invention with a storied history in the realm of automotive design. Designed initially as a practical solution for extra cargo space, these racks seem perfect for the traveling spirit. Yet, despite their promising start, these once-beloved car companions didn't make it to the final miles in today's world of sleek automobiles. But as much as luggage racks seemed like they were here to stay, several dynamics shifted, preventing them from becoming a permanent fixture. As the consumer tastes started changing, car designs moved toward the sleek and aerodynamic, a far cry from the clunky look offered by external racks. Integrated storage became the buzzword, appealing to those who desired a clean look without sacrificing performance. T-tops. T-tops or T-bar roofs were a popular feature in cars during the 1970s and 80s. They had two removable roof panels with a solid bar running down the center creating a T-shape. 
Imagine cruising down the highway with the wind in your hair and the sky as your roof. Sounds like a driver's dream, doesn't it? We're talking about the revolutionary roof design that once captured the hearts of car enthusiasts. Yet despite its allure and the promise of open air adventure combined with structural integrity, the T-top eventually fell out of favor and into the annals of nostalgia. But like all trends, this too met the winds of change. The spotlight started shifting when consumer preferences veered towards larger vehicles, SUVs, and the like. Such automobiles typically didn't sport removable roof panels, steering away from the sporty coupes that once proudly displayed T-tops. Practicality reigned supreme as buyers leaned toward vehicles better suited for every season, casting aside the charm of the T-top for more year-round functionality. Car phones. Car phones were mobile telephones designed for use in cars first introduced by Bell System in 1946 in St. Louis, Missouri. Imagine a world where staying connected from your car wasn't just an option, it was a luxurious privilege. That's the tale of car phones, a captivating chapter in the saga of mobile communication that truly began lending its voice to the airwaves in the mid-20th century. These gadgets might seem like relics now, but back then they laid the groundwork for the ultra-connected lives we lead today. Yet despite their initial allure, several factors led these devices down on a winding road toward obsolescence. Let's turn back the clock to the 1940s. Car phones made their grand debut, largely slotted for the elite and businesses with a never-ending need to stay in touch while zipping down the road. It was a time when Motorola stepped into the spotlight, launching the first commercial car phone service in 1946 using radio technology no less to allow smooth conversation from your vehicle. But here's the kicker. These systems were anything but sleek. They were bulky, costly, and packed with limitations, demanding massive infrastructure and maintenance to function at all. Bench seats. Bench seats, which stretched across the entire width of a car and allowed three people to sit in the front row, were a common feature from the 20s to the 1980s. Imagine stretching out in your car with an expansive bench seat that feels like sitting on a sofa as you cruise down the road. This wasn't just a design choice, it was an icon in automotive history, particularly in American cars, but things didn't work as planned. Family dynamics played a role in this transformation. The quintessential American family setup shifted over the decades, with more households owning multiple vehicles and having diverse transportation needs. There was a noticeable change in what people wanted. Personal space and comfort started taking priority over sheer seating capacity. Consumers wanted cars that felt more intimate, offering space optimized not just for the body, but for the soul. And then there was design. As automotive aesthetics evolved into sleek modernity, bench seats didn't quite fit the picture. Bucket seats erupted in popularity, not just for their functionality, but for their sporty, customizable appeal. They seamlessly blended with the smooth lines of contemporary interiors, ushering in a new era that sidelined the once beloved benches. Now we want to hear from you. Which of these innovations do you think had the most potential? Let us in the comment below.